On October 30th, 2002, 50 Cent's mentor had died. Jason Jam Master Jay Mizell was shot and killed in his own recording studio in Queens, New York in the early evening. The witnesses reported hearing several shots being fired, and when the police arrived at the scene, Jam Master Jay was already dead from a gunshot wound to the head. The police immediately launched an investigation into the murder. Theories started emerging about the possible motives for the murder that included a drug deal gone wrong, a debt owed to an old neighborhood acquaintance, revenge by disgruntled rappers with whom Jay had worked and who may have killed him over a disputed music publishing advance, or even a possible connection to 50 Cent, who had been a protege of Jay's. But despite numerous leads and theories, the case went cold for nearly two decades, and everyone wondered how the killer wasn't found with so many potential eyewitnesses. Jay was born in Brooklyn in 1965, and his family moved to Hollis, Queens when he was 10 years old. He learned how to play guitar, bass, and drums as a kid and started DJing in his teens. Eventually, he teamed up with Joseph Run Simmons, with whom he often played basketball, and Darrell DMC McDaniels in 1982 to create Run DMC. Many believe that this group gave birth to modern hip-hop. Run DMC was one of the first hip-hop groups to cross over into mainstream success and played a huge part in the rise of hip-hop's popularity worldwide. There really has yet to be another hip-hop act like Run DMC. They accomplished so much, broke so many records, and broke down so many barriers as well as establishing many trends. They became instant stars. Their debut single It's Like That was one of the first rap songs where MCs talked about socio-political issues such as unemployment. In 1984, they were the first rap act to appear on MTV with the hit Rockbox, becoming popular with the cable channel's largely white audience with their fusion of hardcore hip-hop and even guitar. Their debut album, Run DMC, in 1984 featured the hit singles It's Like That and Sucker MCs became the first rap album to get gold status. And Jay was the key player according to Jim Tremaine, an editor of DJ Times, a trade magazine for DJs. Run DMC came at a time when rap was not fully embraced by even the urban culture. People can't understand how important they were in pop music history. They were absolutely as revolutionary as Elvis when it came to popularizing rap, and it was Jay who provided the beat. Their collaboration with Aerosmith further solidified the rap rock legacy that they founded in 1984, resulting in Walk This Way becoming the first rap song to reach the top five of the Billboard Hot 100. But their third album, Raising Hell, released in 1986, took things to another level. The album's lead single, My Adidas, was a tribute to the group's love for the German sneakers. In 1986, Adidas executive Angelo Anastasio attended a concert by the group at Madison Square Garden. During the song, Run asked the crowd to raise their sneakers in the air. Anastasio quickly signed Run DMC to a million dollar endorsement deal, which also included their own signature shoes. After realizing the power of hip-hop marketing when he saw thousands of people holding up their Adidas sneakers in the air, this led to the first hip-hop endorsement deal ever. With additional hits such as It's Tricky, the album sold over a million copies within a few months, making it one of the first rap albums to ever be certified platinum. And by April of the following year, the album was certified three times platinum, making the group the first act to go multi-platinum. By the late 80s, Jay was branching out on his own, he produced The Ruler's Back, the popular track that would later be used by Jay-Z for his own song of the same name, and in 1989, Jay launched his own label, JMJ Records. Even though his label's roster would feature an eclectic collection of artists, it would be in 1992 that JMJ Records scored its first major win as a label. Jay signed Onyx, a quartet out of South Jamaica, Queens, with a penchant for aggressive and rough rhymes. In 1992, the label released the single Throw Your Guns, and it became a much-requested radio hit on East Coast stations. It eventually rose to number one on Billboard's Hot Rap Singles charts, and floated around the lower reaches of the Hot 100. Onyx's next single, Slam, became the group's major breakthrough. The song took over the radio in the spring of 1993, going all the way to number four on the Billboard Hot 100. The group's debut album, Back to Up, was a platinum seller, and JMJ Records was seeing its first major success alongside a resurgent run DMC who'd seen their own Billboard Top 10 hit with Down With The King just a few months prior. However, Jam Master Jay's roots and his heart were always tied to Queens. In the late 90s, he found another undiscovered gem in his home borough, 
a brash battle rapper named Curtis James Jackson III, or as we know him, 50 Cent, was making a name for himself, and Jay was struck by his confrontational style. Although 50 would eventually sign with Eminem on Dre's Aftermath and Shady record label, Jay was the first who became aware of this future superstar. 50 Cent's breakthrough would finally come in 2002. Sadly, Jam Master Jay was killed in October of that year. Over the next two decades, Jay's murder achieved a mythic status as one of the rap world's coldest cases. There were plenty of leads, but none of them resulted in charges. Until 2020. According to the prosecution and court documents, it's been challenging to convict Jay's murders given the attempts to intimidate and silence potential witnesses. Despite those situations that discourage witnesses from testifying, they were willing to talk after 18 years. In August 2020, the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Eastern District of New York has alleged that Mizell was murdered by Ronald Tenard Washington and Carl Jordan, also known as Little D or Noid, who were upset that they had been cut out of a drug deal. The two men were charged with murder while engaged in drug trafficking in a 10-count indictment unsealed on Monday the 17th in the U.S. District Court in Brooklyn of 2022. On or about October 30th, 2002, within the Eastern District of New York and elsewhere, the defendants Carl Jordan Jr., known as Little D, annoyed, and Ronald Washington, also known as Tenard, together with others while engaged in an offense punishable under Section 841, to wit, a conspiracy to distribute 5 kilograms or more of a mixture or substance containing cocaine, a Schedule II controlled substance, did knowingly and intentionally kill and counsel, command, induce, and cause the intentional killing of an individual to wit, Jason Mizell, also known as Jam Master J, and such killing did result. Little D was arrested on Sunday, and Tenard was currently serving a prison sentence for robbery. Both had pled not guilty. In court papers released in 2007, Tenard was first confirmed to be a suspect in Jay's murder. Also, the same documents named him as a suspect in the 1995 fatal shooting of Randy Walker, an associate of the rapper Tupac Shakur. He had previously denied involvement in either case and in a sworn statement referred to Jay as a childhood friend. Run DMC bandmate DMC said he had mixed emotions about the long-awaited arrest. Although this latest news opens up a lot of painful memories for all of us who knew and loved Jam Master Jay, I'm relieved to hear that two suspects have been arrested and charged with this murder. It's been a difficult 18 years not having him around while knowing that his murderers were not yet indicted for this heinous crime. Fans let out a collective sigh of relief when they were apprehended. The trial is expected to begin sometime in February, and if found guilty, they face a minimum of 20 years and a maximum of life in prison. Jay's murder received off and on attention from authorities as well as the media over the years. The case was the center of many documentaries such as Set the Record Straight, the Jam Master J case that gave exclusive information and insights into the complex legacy of the pioneer, and a 2018 episode of the Netflix documentary series Remastered that looked at the loose threads in the killing as well as the lack of urgency displayed by law enforcement to solve it back then. In the years that passed, his legacy has only grown more noticeable though. Just before he got killed, he had founded the Scratch DJ Academy which was established to provide music education to young people, and it was a testament to Jay's commitment to giving back to his neighborhood, community, and hip-hop as a whole through promoting the art of DJing. Through the Scratch Academy, future generations would have had the opportunity to learn from and be inspired by Jay's talent and passion for music. His legacy as a pioneer of hip-hop and a master of the turntables will continue to influence and inspire musicians for years to come, and hopefully, even two decades later, he's finally able to get justice.